Good morning, my dear students. Welcome back to online classes. Today, we'll start with a beautiful and interesting story from your first flight book. So, before starting the story, I would like to ask you a question. If you are in trouble, who is the first person that comes to your mind? I feel the person on whom we have trust and belief because only that person can solve our problems, isn't it? In this story also there is a question of trust. The name of the story is a letter to God, which is written by G. L. Fuentes. So let's talk about Fuentes. Gregorian Lopez Fuentes was born on 17th November 1895 in Mexico and he died on 10th December. 1966. He was one of the most important chronicles of Mexican Revolution. In his youth, he used to spend his time in his father's store, where he came in contact with Indians, farmers and laborers of the region, whose life he would describe with deep insight. So this was about the author G. L. Fuentes. Now let's talk about the story. They say faith can move mountains. So this is also this story is also based on the faith, faith of a farmer called Lencho. Lencho was a farmer who is the main character of the story. He had unshakable faith in God. When he was in problem, he decided to write a letter to God. Isn't it strange to write a letter to God? Lencho had a childlike faith in God and so he wrote a letter to God asking for help. So let's see whether Lencho had received help from God or not. The story begins with a brief description of the setting which tells us that it is a rural area. The story is set in a valley wherein there is the only house on the top of a hill. That house belongs to Lencho. From the height, one could see the rivers, hills and the fields covered with flowers. The only thing needed was a downpour or at least a shower so that he could yield a good harvest. Lencho, who is the main character of this story, who is a farmer, is completely dependent on his fields to satisfy the needs of his family. So to know about Lencho and his faith in God, let's begin the story. The house, the only one in the entire valley, sat on the crest of a low hill. The house, the only one in the entire valley sat on a crest of low hill. Here, the author has used non-defining relative clause. 
Now, what is non-refining relative clause? Some additional information is given. Now, here the additional information about the house is given. Which house? Which was the only one in the entire valley. So, in that whole valley, Lencho's house was the only one which was on the crest of a low hill. Crest means top of. So you can see here, a top of hill. Crest means a top of hill. So Lencho's house was on the top of a low hill. From this height, one could see the river and the field of ripe corn dotted with the flowers that always promised a good harvest. So from this height where Lencho's house was situated, from this house, from this height, one could see the river and the corn field which was dotted with flowers. Dotted means covered or you can say full of, which was covered with flowers or which was full of flowers. It always promised a good harvest. The only thing the earth needed was a downpour or at least a shower. So what was the only thing the earth needed? It was downpour. Downpour means heavy rain. So to yield a good crop for good harvest, only thing needed was heavy rain or, or at least a shower. Throughout the morning, Lencho, who knew his fields intimately, had done nothing else but see the sky towards the northeast. Now, Lencho, who was a farmer, throughout the morning, he had done nothing but see towards the northeast. He was waiting for the rain. He was expecting rain. And so, he, lo he was looking in the northeast direction. Intimately means closely. Intimately means very closely. Here also the author has used non-defining relative clause. Now we are really going to get some water woman. The woman who was preparing supper replied, Yes, God willing. Now in this para, there is a description of a woman who is Lencho's wife. So Lencho tells his wife that he is expecting rain. And she replies that if God wish, it will rain. Lencho's wife, she was preparing supper. So what is supper? Supper is the late evening meal. The older boys were working in the fields while the smaller ones were playing near the house until the woman called to them all, come for dinner. Now, after the meal was prepared, she called the children for dinner. While she was preparing the meal, her older children were working in the field while the smaller children were playing outside. So once the meal was ready, she called everyone for dinner. It was during the meal that just as Lencho had predicted big drops of rain began to fall. So now when they started to have their meal, during that time the big drops of rain started to fall as Lencho had predicted. In the northeast huge mountains of clouds could be seen approaching. 
So now in the northeast direction, a huge mountains of clouds could be seen. Now huge mountains of clouds. Here the author has used metaphor. Now what is metaphor? Metaphor means comparison. So here the author has compared the clouds to huge mountains. So he could see the huge mountains of clouds approaching near. Approaching means coming. The air was fresh and sweet. The man went out for no other reason than to have the pleasure of feeling the rain on his body. And when he returned, he exclaimed, These aren't raindrops falling from the sky. They are new coins. The big drops are ten cent pieces and the little ones are fives. So when it started raining, Lencho was very happy because it was the only thing it was needed for his crop and so he was very happy. So he wanted to enjoy the moment. He wanted to have the pleasure of feeling the rain on his body. So he went out and he started to feel the pleasure of rain drops on his body. As it started raining, the atmosphere was fresh and sweet. So you know, when it rains for the first time, the atmosphere is very pleasant and the fragrance of the earth it's very sweet. So Lencho was satisfied. He was contented. After feeling uh, the, after enjoying the rain, Lencho returned into the house and he exclaimed. He uh, said with surprise that the raindrops were like new coins. Again here the author has used metaphor. The raindrops are compared to new coins. Now why he has said it as new coins? Because if uh, he would yield a good harvest, he could sell the crop and he could get money. And with that money, he could fulfill the needs of his family. So these raindrops were like new coins for Lencho. He said that the big raindrops were 10 cent pieces and the small raindrops were 5 cent pieces. Now a cent is the currency like we have rupees in Mexico it is cent. So the big drops were compared to 10 cent and the small drops were compared to 5 cents. With a satisfied expression, he regarded the field of ripe corn with its flowers draped in a curtain of rain. Now, draped means adorn, cover or wrap. So, as now Lencho was satisfied because it started raining. So, with great satisfaction, with great contentment, he looked at his field which were covered with the ripe corn was covered, was adorned, was draped with the curtain of rain. But suddenly a strong wind began to blow and along with the rain very large hailstones began to fall. But suddenly what happened? These raindrops changed into hailstones. The, hailstone began, the hailstones began to fall. There was a strong wind blowing. Now see. Now nature. There is a conflict between human and nature. Now what is conflict? Conflict, uh, conflict in literature means... Uh, the struggle with the opposite opposition the struggle of the main character 
with the opposition so now here as the hailstones began to fall now lencho was worried about his crops and with the falling of hailstone the conflict begins the struggle of lencho begins these truly did resemble new silver coins the boys exposing themselves to the rain ran out to collect the frozen pearls now these hailstones they resemble resemble means look like so they looked like silver coins now here again the author has compared the hailstones to silver coins now he has uh, used metaphor again now here why has the author said hailstones as silver coins because silver coins are useless nowadays they don't have any value earlier in the period of kings there were silver coins but now these silver coins do not have any importance so now these hailstones were not good for his crops and so he has said that these hailstones were silver coins for him the boys who were enjoying the rain they ran and they started to collect the hailstones the frozen pearls now here the hailstones are said to be frozen pearls it's really getting bad now exclaimed the man i hope it passes quickly so now lencho was worried he knew that if it doesn't pass quickly his field would be destroyed and so he was worried because that was the only source of livelihood for him and so he hoped that this would pass quickly it did not pass quickly for an hour the hail rained on the house the garden the hillside the corn field on the whole valley the field was white as if covered with salt but as expected by lencho it did not stop it did not pass the hailstone did not stop for an hour the hail rained the hail rained on the house in the garden the hill the corn field the entire valley so everything was covered with snow it looked as if it was covered with salt so everything was white as if it was covered with salt not a leaf remained on the trees the corn was totally destroyed flowers were gone from the plants lencho's soul was filled with sadness when the storm had passed he stood in the middle of the field and said to his sons a flock of locust would have left more than this the hail has left nothing in this uh, passage the author has used negative words like no not nothing so these words show absence this corn field was totally destroyed nothing was left lencho was filled with sorrow so when the hail had stopped he stood in the middle of his field and he told his son he said to his sons that the locust the flock of locust would have left something would have left more than this now what is meant by flock a destructively numerous inflow or 
multiplication of harmful animals infestation so the inflow of harmful animal that is called as la locusts are the insects which fly in a large group and destroy the crops so lencho said that if the fields would have been attacked by the locust at least there would be something left but this hailstone had left nothing it has destroyed everything it has totally destroyed everything the hail has left nothing this year we will have no corn that night was a sorrowful one all our work for nothing there is no one who can help us we will all go hungry this year all these dialogues will prove how terrible the aftermath of calamity was so the type of conflict here which is dominating is man versus nature now lencho who was eagerly waiting for the rain it rained so heavily the hailstone rained on the field and everything was destroyed so now lencho's struggle began here as everything was totally destroyed there was nothing left to feed himself and his family so now his struggle started so it was the conflict between a man and nature you have learned that there was a farmer whose total livelihood depended on farm and his own field was destroyed due to hailstones so let's see what happens next but in the hearts of all who lived in that solitary in the middle of the valley there was a single hope help from god now here when the field was totally destroyed there was nothing left so there was a single hope and that was help from god this hope was in the hearts of the people who lived in the solitary house solitary lonely which was the only one in the middle of the valley and you know that house belonged to whom lencho so lencho and his family they had only one hope and that hope was help from god don't be so upset even though this seems like total loss remember no one dies of hunger so here we should not be upset even if we have suffered a total loss because no one dies of hunger that's why they say no one dies of Worst of the poor, he gets food from somewhere. God provides him food, uh, food from one way or the other. So here they say that nobody dies of hunger. So uh, the author Jeff Kuntis says that. we should not be upset we should not lose hope even in the worst situation all through the night they should talk only of one hope the help of god whose eyes as he had been instructed see everything even 
knowing what is deep in one's concerns. Now, throughout the night, whole night, Mencho thought only of one hope that he had from God. Whose eyes as he had been instructed to see everything. Now, uh, the farmer, Mencho, had been instructed that God's eyes see everything. Nothing is hidden from God. Even what is deep in one's concerns. Even what is in our concerns. Concerns means evil sense of right or wrong. So even whatever is there in our concerns, in our inner sense, that also is not hidden from God. So God knows everything what is there even deep inside us. Lencho was an ox of a man, working like an animal in the fields, but still he knew how to write. Now Lencho was an ox of a man. Ox of a man means hard working and strong like an ox. Here also the author has used metaphor. Lencho is compared to ox. His strength and ability to work is compared with the strength and ability to work of the ox. Here also, Puritus had used metaphor. So even he was a very strong, uh, he was like an ox, he used to work like an ox in the field. He knew how to write, means he was educated, he was literate. The following Sunday at daybreak, he began to write a letter which he himself would carry to town and place in the meeting. It was nothing less than a letter to God. So now, whole night he thought of the book from God and uh, on the following Sunday he wrote a letter. He began to write a letter and he would carry the letter, he himself would carry that letter to the town so that he could be posted and the letter was uh, to whom? None other than God. So then you had written a letter to God. He has expressed his situation. He has talked about his problems in his letter. God, he wrote, If you don't help me, my family and I will go hungry this year. I need a hundred pesos in order to sow my feet again and to leave until the crop comes because the hailstorm. So now God had Lencho written in his letter, he had written to God that God, if you will not help me, my family will go hungry. And uh, he demanded 100 pesos. Pesos, it is a currency uh, in uh, Latin American countries. So he demanded from God 100 pesos so that he could sow the field again and till the next crops come, he could feed his family because uh, his crops were totally destroyed, there was nothing left and he was totally dependent on his crops but now as his crops were destroyed, he had nothing left him and so he demanded 100 pesos so that he could sow the field again and the crops come, he needs something to eat to feed his family so that he could feed his family with that money. So he demanded 100 pesos. He wrote to God on the envelope, put the letter inside and still troubled went to town. So after writing the letter, he wrote to God on the envelope. Then he put that letter inside the envelope. Still he was troubled. He was tensed. And he went to the town to post the letter. 
stamp on that and then we posted that letter in the mailbox. One of the employees who was a postman and also helped at the post office went to his boss laughing heartily and showed him the letter to God. So now uh, there was one postman also worked, helped in the post office. So now you know the uh, duty of a postman is to deliver letter. So this postman, he used to also help in the post office work. So when he saw the letter on which it was written to God, at that time he laughed happily. He could not uh, control his emotions. That how one can send a letter to God. So he went to the postmaster to show that letter. Never in his career as a postman had he known that address. Now this postman, he had never seen anyone writing a letter to God. He has never delivered a letter on such address. And so letter and went to the postmaster. The postmaster, a fat, amiable fellow, also broke out laughing but almost immediately he turned serious and tapping the letter on the desk commented, what way I wish I had the faith of the man who wrote this letter. So now when the postman went to the Postmaster. Initially, the postmaster also burst out laughing. The postmaster, he was amiable person. Amiable means friendly, pleasant. So he also burst out laughing, but immediately he stopped laughing. He turned very serious and uh, tapping the letter. Give 
some money. He also, he himself gave some part of his salary and his friends also contributed as it was an act of charity. So they were also dedicated to the charity. It was impossible for him to gather together the hundred pesos. So he was able to send the farmer only a little more than half. He put the money in an envelope addressed to Hencho and with it a letter containing only a single word as a signature for it. Now, it was not possible for the postmaster to collect 100 pesos. These were demanded by Hencho. But he managed to collect more than half of what were, whatever were demanded. And he put that money in and a letter. In that letter, only uh, there was a signature to God. And he sent that letter along with money to pledge. So in that letter, there was only a single word. God. Only there was one single word, God, as a signature. The following Sunday, Pencho came a bit earlier than usual to ask if there was a letter for him. It was the postman himself who handed the letter to him while the postmaster, experiencing the contentment of a man who has performed a good deed, looked on from his office. Now the following Sunday, the next Sunday, Benjo came to the post office and he asked if there was any letter for him. Now he was uh, waiting for the reply from God as he had already uh, sent the letter to Papa demanding 100 pesos. So he was waiting for a reply and so he came to the post office to ask if there was any letter for him. So the same postman handed uh, a letter to Lencho and the postmaster he was sitting on his desk and he hoped that after seeing the money Lencho will be contented, contented means satisfaction. He wanted to see the contentment that is satisfaction on Lencho's face. Because uh, he had performed a good deed, the postmaster and the employees, uh, they helped Lencho and they have performed a good deed. They have helped someone and uh, so they hope that Lencho will be satisfied. Lencho showed not the slightest surprise on seeing the money. Such was his confidence. But he became angry when and he counted the money. God could not have made a mistake, nor could he have denied Lencho what he had received. Now, when Lencho received a letter, he was not at all surprised. Since he had that faith, he knew that 100% God will reply. And so he did not have a slightest surprise when he received the letter or when he received.
a public table and on that table he started to write a letter again. With much drinking of his brew, caused by the effort he had to make to express his ideas. Now, while writing, he was wrinkling his eyebrows. Uh, he had a stress because he had to take.
were generous, they were considered as dishonest. This is called, this is what is the irony of this lesson. Then um, we have get the message to this lesson that all petty war that was to overcome difficult things. Now let Job's own faith in God.